guys, my name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA, and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course! Now we move on to talking about the properties of electrons. And so diffraction patterns result from constructive and destructive interference, which is shown in this diagram right here. And so if we add these two waves together, point by point, we end up with a new wave that looks pretty, pretty much like the original waves, but with a higher amplitude right here. This situation where the resultant wave is bigger than either of the two original is called constructive interference. The waves are added together to form a bigger wave. But on the other hand, what if we add these waves together, where the high part is going to overlap with the low part. When the first wave is up and the second wave is down, the two add to zero, like so. So, in fact, all of the points of the two waves exactly cancel each other out and there's no wave left. And this is called destructive interference. And so light or light waves in general show diffraction patterns, as you can see here. X-rays passing through a crystal also show diffraction. And so if you can see right here, when things go through, incident light goes through a hole, it creates these diffraction patterns through the grating, and the, wa the waves interfere constructively where the bright lines are shown, and where waves interfere destructively, we get the dark lines. And so this is a screen-like surface that basically detects where the constructive and destructive interference of waves are happening. But the crazy thing is that passing through a crystal also shows diffraction. So this is an example of electrons passing through a crystal, and you see these patterns, the light parts and the dark parts of constructive and, dis and destructive interference. So what does this mean? It means that electrons must have wave-like properties. And so diffraction patterns resulting from interacting waves means that electrons are not just particle-like, but they're also wave-like. And this is the quantum mechanical description of electrons. So all matter has wave-like wave -like properties, but it's only noticed for objects like electrons that are really small in mass and have very high velocity. So from here I can introduce the de Broglie equation, which is that the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the mass times the velocity. So what this is saying is that any moving particle with a momentum has wave-like wave -like properties with a wavelength of lambda. Okay, so for example, if I said that we had a 0 0.1 kilogram baseball, and it's traveling at 35 meters per second, we can simply plug this into this equation to solve for the wavelength. Planck's constant is the number that we've been using, 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 34 joule second, divided by the mass, which is 0 0.1 kilograms, and the velocity, which is 35 meters per second. And we end up with a value of 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 34 meters. So the quantum mechanical description of atoms is that electrons have discrete energies with only certain wavelengths that are allowed inside an atom. And an electron is described as a circular standing wave around the nucleus. So this is a really important point where we can't, we can't just think about electrons as particles anymore, but also having wave-like properties. So now, based off of this, we can do a couple of calculations.